The French president arrived in the Paris suburb of Les Mureaux to deliver a speech on separatism. Emmanuel Macron said there was no place in French society for divisions along religious lines. The biggest threat to France's values and secular law, he said, was radical Islam. What we must... What, the biggest threat? The law, he said, was radical... Radical Islam. Hold on. Did he say the biggest? What? ...along religious lines. The biggest threat to France's values and secular law... He the biggest threat to France's values and secular law is radical Islam. Oof. Wow, that's pretty... Okay, 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 okay. Um, by the way, this happened a week ago. He said... Oh, secular person. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to add the link for members to join in today. Yeah, I haven't done that for a while. Let me just go through this fast and so I could do that. It was radical Islam. What we must fight is Islamist separatism. It's a conscious, theoretical, socio-political project. It's repeatedly at odds with the values of the Republic and often leads to the creation of a counter-society. Macron said that Islam around the world faced problems. He said he wasn't stigmatizing Muslims, but some disagreed. What some people tell me here is that rather than focusing on so-called separatism, Emmanuel Macron would do better to work more on reducing unemployment and alleviating poverty. Why not both? Why not both? Why do people always, when you're trying to address a problem, they're like, hey, why instead of doing this, why don't you actually solve that problem instead? Like, we could do both problems. Like, that's the, go the job of the government is to address more than one problem at a time. Like, I'm pretty sure... The French government is not needs to like fuck the entire French government doesn't need to have to like oh let's just focus on this one problem at a time and not do anything else. I don't think it works like that. But this is a this is a comeback. This is the genius comeback people have whenever you, they they don't like you saying something, right? They I get that all the time. Like uh, like I criticize something like oh Armin, why didn't you criticize this instead? Like I have. I have, okay, but even if I hadn't, I criticize many things, right? They so like, oh, why? Oh, God, it's such a stupid question. It's a really dumb question. Why don't you address this other problem here? It seems like you're trying to distract, it's, it's, because maybe, maybe you don't have any good responses to the fact that this why this is actually a problem in your country. So because you don't have anything in response to say, so you just have to do what about is them? And you be like, hey, don't look over here. Look over there. There's other problems here. Yeah. They could address those as well. Yeah, it's, it's not even, yeah, marketing, multi, multitasking. I mean, think about, imagine having a government that could do only one problem at a time. The, I don't think that country will survive. Realities that can push people to the margins of society. It is a subject that hides the real misery. It's like redecorating the facade of a building but not the inside. Yes, there is crime, but what creates it? It's a lack of projects or jobs for young people. Local associations here have no money. Minorities are not helped enough and some neighborhoods are just ignored. Yeah, you c yeah those are other problems that need to be addressed. Neighborhoods like this one. At a charity food bank, it's survival, not separatism, that's on people's minds. Yeah, obviously these people who are dealing with shortage of food or something, there's something else that's on their mind. Just because it's not on their mind, it doesn't mean that it shouldn't be some other people's minds, okay? Imagine, like, the, the government where you live is dealing with, you know, food shortages and also, I don't know, um bad you know education system collapsing and you like oh i'm so hungry uh right now i don't have food so the, um, education is not on my mind okay fine it's not on your mind but it should be on someone else's mind just because it's not on your mind doesn't mean that everybody should have focus on the problems that you only care about god damn it guys this is so so dumb like wait okay um, a, B, A, A, B, B, if you spam the live chat one more time like this, I'm going to ban you. New anti I'm going to put you on timeout this time, but next time I'm going to ban you.
Separatism law aims to erase religious divisions, but for some the proposed legislation is more likely to reinforce them. Macron's speech comes one week after an attack in Paris outside the offices of the Charlie Hebdo newspaper. Four years ago, two police officers from Les Mureaux were killed by a man who claimed allegiance to ISIL. The new anti-separatism law aims to erase religious divisions, but for some the proposed legislation is more likely to reinforce all right, reinforce it. Okay, let's look at this um, Muslim guy's take on it. This is by the channel Smile to Jannah. It's a big channel. It's like 300,000 subscribers. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, guys. Uh, yes, indeed. Or like the French like to say, bonjour. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, oui, oui. Behave yourself. There's kids watching. What? Nice French. Yeah, whatever. Nice friend. Yeah, whatever. I'm not making it up, mate. God's sake. Leaders have no. no this guy's humor never gets me. I mean, I'm not saying it's not funny. It might be funny for some other people, but I never. I have yet to even chuckle with one of his jokes. Notice that the incompetent running of the country will be ignored so long as they are combating this boogeyman that they call the Muslims. <laughs> Okay, he never said the Muslim. Okay, if you actually watch Macron's speech, he never said Muslims as a whole. In fact, he, see, these people are strawmanning. Gonna, I'm going to predict that this guy is going to pretend that Macron said so many things that he didn't say, okay? Because if you actually watch his speech, he went out of his way to keep saying that this is a minority, blah, blah, blah. This is not everybody, blah, blah, blah. But this is a problem, blah, blah, blah. Um, he, he actually was a lot milder than I would have ever been. So one thing I didn't like about his speech, I mean, I can't be that picky because this is like the most, it was one of the best um, pushback against Islamism that I've ever seen. But obviously there, it's never going to be as good as, you know, something I would have said. <laughs> but again, these politicians, they can't be that aggressive, right? So one thing, for example, he keeps on saying, he was like, political Islam, radical Islam. And I'm like, man, you know, it's not, come on, come on. It's not, the problem is not radical Islam. The problem is not political Islam. The problem is Islam. The problem is Islam. Okay. I mean, we, we know, you guys know that. I know that. We all know that. But come on, we can't expect, I mean, come on, think about it. Do you think Macron, if he comes out saying it's like the problem, yeah, Islam is the problem. Imagine if he came out to say that. Obviously, he wouldn't be able to say that. That would be like the end of him, right? So even though, like sometimes we wish, like, you know, we can't be picky. Like we have to get what you, we have to take what we can get, right? So they call. Oh, AJ is here, and oh, hold on, let me see. Idris is here. Idris saying Macron even acknowledged part of the separation stemmed partly from the lack of investment in porn. Yes, there was. Okay, we'll get to that because he kept on criticizing the, them, uh, the French government for a lot of, uh, they, they were very reflective of their own shortcomings. I, I watched the speech, right? So yeah, but we'll, we'll get to that. Yes, Soha is saying the problem is Islam itself, exactly. Um, <laughs> that would be weird, okay. All the Muslims. <laughs> This concept of having a boogeyman. He did not do that. He did not make Muslims a boogeyman. He did not do that. Come on, what a dishonest take. And proves very successful for governments because anytime they're struggling with doing the actual job, they can just blame this boogeyman group. Oh, every time they're being, oh yeah, every time people complain about them not doing actual job. He did that himself! You moron! He, like, he tried to distract people from their shortcomings. No, you moron. He actually highlighted their own shortcomings. It's like, they, oh, they're trying to bring the boogeyman Muslims to scare people out of the, re the real flaws in the government. Nope, nope, nope. If you actually watch that speech itself, you can see that he didn't do that. He actually highlighted it. Yeah, there's been the Bavarian Illuminati in the past. Ca oh, yeah, the Illuminati. That's, wait, that's your favorite, com your community's favorite conspiracy. Come on. Catholics, Jews, Blacks. And now, oh yeah, the, the Jews, like yeah, you're, again, maybe do some self-reflection on your own community. Who blame? Wow, you're saying that oh, people have boogeyman. They use like the Illuminati and the Jews as a way to <laughs> fearmonger 
And you book, yeah, really, Illuminati and the Jews. Hmm, which community uses those groups of those as fear mongering the most? I wonder, I wonder. Are you serious, man? Are you serious? Do you not know who? <laughs> Come on, he knows. What the <sighs> hypocrite? It's just the turn of the Muslims. There are many leaders that have taken this strategy. Trump, of course, we know with the Muslim ban and retweeting far right and even his policies as well and him staying quiet. Yeah, I, I don't know what you guys consider far right, probably not far right. Whenever an Islamophobic act happens. And we move the capital of Israel to Jerusalem. What does this got to do with Macron's speech? You guys just like we're doing what about is it? You've got Boris Johnson. Well, he's made far right commentaries in the past and he got the right, everything that is everything we don't like is far right. Stamp of approval of far right leaders right. like Tommy Robinson. And everyone should vote for Boris Johnson. And Katie Hopkins. Yeah, you've got far far right people have also said that they should you should vote for Biden. If recently. Far right people also have said that you should vote for Clinton. Does that make Biden and Clinton far right? Far right in Australia. Yeah, it's like but yes, maybe you're right. Islam is far right. Islam is actually far right. You got Bolsonaro in Brazil, and of course Modi. Yeah, Modi. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Okay, fine. We, I give you that. Modi is far right. Mr. Dolan Trump. And now Macron, with the elections coming up, he has also decided to get a piece of the pie. Of course, his pie is croissant and snail flavored. It's probably going to please people on the right, on the far right, because he will not say so, but. Yes, the 2022. I don't like how people keep using the right and far right as if they're almost the same thing. You know, I don't do this with the left and I don't do this with the right, okay? I keep, when, when I attack the woke, I keep clarifying that most of the left is not like the, the cult, the, you know, the cult of woke. I, again, but people do this with the right as well, like the right and the far right, or like, yeah, as if they're almost the same thing. They're not, okay? And I say, I say this as somebody who doesn't consider himself to be part of the right wing, but I think it's unfair to keep on saying the right and the far right. Yeah, they're very the right and the far right are very, very different from each other. Very different. To election insight. So this mug is putting forward an anti-separatism bill. It's gonna be officially discussed in Parliament around the December area. <laughs> and if it goes ahead, it should come into effect by next year.